of Woodbridge and Hedgeley is a fictional novel set in 1820 and 21 in the countryside of Gloucestershire, England. It's both a light historical survey of the state of natural science, agriculture, and briefly engineering, and a historical lens that lets the audience examine the phenomenon of science denial, which we in the first part of the 21st century have come to suffer in our politics and in our media. Our main character is Thomas Winter, who's a 30-year-old bachelor and son of a wealthy industrialist. He spent the last decade working as an engineer in various factories and mills that his father owns. Glass and iron manufacturing, machine tooling, that sort of thing. His focus has always been on improving designs, making machines or components more efficient, and he's adopted a philosophy that slow, steady, low volatility improvement in industry and perhaps society brings about the happiest result. Well, at the start of the novel, Mr. Winter has quit his positions at his father's factories and is resolved to live in the countryside, in search of peace and quiet, fresh air and the like. He specifically picks Woodbridge and Hedgeley, as in a lot of ways it's like walking back a hundred years in time. It's the diametric opposite of what he's come to know the last ten years of his life. Yet he can't so easily turn his mind off. He's always in search of accomplishment and improvement around him. So he has his heart set on using what is known of agricultural science at the time to the improvement of the agrarian land about the towns and their crop yields. Our next character is George Moore, who is the local squire and largest landowner in the area. He's substantially wealthy, he comes from old money, and is thusly the town's lay magistrate, the president of the local agricultural society, and he partially funds a local weekly newspaper called The Country Anglican. He lives in a large estate home featured throughout the novel called Woodbridge Manor. Mr. Winter's first duty when he arrives to his new towns is to form an alliance with Mr. Moore, and this allows him access to the agricultural society and thusly making it easier for him to run soil chemistry surveys throughout the town's fields, form alliances with local farmers, etc., etc. George Moore has a younger brother, Jonathan Moore, Woodbridge's Anglican parson, who at the start of the novel is in the midst of traveling back to the towns from an extended stay in Edinburgh, where he has the year before laid their younger brother Charles to rest. Charles was a natural philosopher and professor at the town's university and had died tragically in the field in pursuit of the advancement of human knowledge. Jonathan Moore ends up befriending many of Charles's colleagues in an attempt to understand his late brother's passion, and in so doing digests a lot of the ideas that were circulating at the time with regard to natural history. And once back to Woodbridge, he resolves to issue a series of science lectures dedicated to Charles, two of which the novel features in detail concerning the geologist James Hutton's theory of the Earth, in which the man hypothesizes that there is a great underground heat source that motivates the geology of the Earth, and Erasmus Darwin, the grandfather of Charles Darwin, who owns a sort of Lamarckian view on the subject of evolution. Then we have Harriet Moore, Jonathan Moore's daughter, who plays the role of a Jane Austen-inspired progressive female for the period reads too much, thinks too much, and voices her opinion rather strongly within her intimate social circle, walks about the towns and their surrounding woodlands unchaperoned, and is a great jolter of the country bachelors. I shall not give too much away, but perhaps she pursues a secret love affair throughout the story. There are plenty of other characters to be had throughout. We have, of course, the science denialists who make trouble both for benevolent reasons and those less so a for-profit propagandist, and a few other Austin archetypes thrown in for humor and tragedy alike, all displaying unique qualities and motives that the audience should get a fair sampling of the spectrum of social circumstance at the time. Anyone interested in historical science or the origins of natural history and the state of agriculture in the early 19th century and of course there's something there for the Jane Austen fans and those interested in socio-political satire. And I don't think the general period drama lovers would go wrong in taking a look at it.